Hi, and welcome to the video on elimination reactions. In this first video, we are going to focus on what is known as the E1 elimination mechanism. Let's analyze what has happened between the starting materials, defined as S, M, and the products, P. Notice that this group has left. It's called the leaving group. A proton has been removed, the CH bond has broken, and a pi bond is formed. The leaving group bears a negative charge, and the base, which is in the starting reaction, has formed a bond with the proton. There are two possible mechanisms for this elimination reaction, and we're eventually going to be analyzing both of them. In this video, we're going to be focusing on what is known as the E1 mechanism. The E stands for elimination, and the 1 stands for unimolecular, or one molecule, in the rate determining step. In the rate law for the E1 mechanism, R is equal to K, a constant, times the concentration of the starting material. That was the carbon-based substance that bore the leaving group. The reaction rate depends only on the concentration of the starting material. Let's use an example to analyze the mechanism. In step one, the electronegative iodine acts as a leaving group and it draws the electrons toward itself, taking the electrons from this single bond. That bond breakage generates a carbocation. The central carbon is now deficient in electrons, has a positive charge, and iodide has formed. This is the slowest step, or rate determining step, of the reaction. In the next step, a base removes the proton to generate a double bond. While the iodide could act as the base, it's much more likely that the water will do this, will play this role. Because, it's, because the water is in large excess, it's much more likely to be the one that collides with the proton on the beta carbon, and so much more likely to act as the base in the reaction. When water collides, it will form a bond with the proton on the carbon adjacent to the carbocation, known as the beta carbon, and the electrons from the carbon-proton bond flow toward the positive charge. Overall, this is a two-step reaction. The first step is the rate-determining step. The second step serves to generate the final product. We can look at the reaction coordinate diagram, which has energy on the y-axis and the reaction coordinate, or reaction progress, on the x-axis. Remember that even though we tend to read left to right, reactions can, in principle, always go in reverse as well. The starting material is shown at the left-hand side of the diagram. The reaction goes up in energy toward the transition state. In the transition state, the carbon-iodine bond is breaking, with the electronegative iodine pulling the electrons toward it. Then we have the first intermediate, the carbocation, and notice that it's of higher energy than both the starting material and the product. As the base comes in to remove a proton, in this case, the base is water for the reaction, the base removes a proton, so there's a bond forming between the oxygen and the hydrogen atom. The bond breaks between the carbon and the hydrogen atoms. That pi bond, the double bond portion, is forming between the two carbons, and there's the second transition state, and then we form the products. Now it's important to know that carbocations are very high in energy. They're not stable species. The transition state leading to their formation is therefore also high in energy. And so step one is the rate determining step of the reaction. The lower that activation energy, the faster the reaction will go. In the next video, we're going to be going through the characteristics for a faster and more efficient E1 reaction.